making it your own. Sorry about that. All right, I think we're recording now. Okay. Florence, how you doing? Can you hear me at all? Oh, wait, sorry. Are you talking? Yeah, but. Okay. I couldn't hear you for a second, but I had to turn it on in here. So what do you think improvisation is? I think it's like taking a song that already exists, but making it like your own. Okay, like taking. Adding your own. Adding your own twist to, to pre-existing music. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, those are both really good uh, kind of explanations or guesses. In my mind, um, the way that I kind of, the way that I define improvisation um, is just real time, like in real time composing um, or in real time uh, creating sounds, you know, and having that be a part of the musical experience in that moment in time. So there's obviously, uh, improvisation exists in most genres of music, whether we uh, know them to or not, but you know the biggest genre of music that we know that includes improvisation is is jazz. Uh, so we'll take a moment to uh, learn, you know, a little bit from the pros here, um, exactly how they define uh, improvisation. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eli Yaman, Head of Instruction for the Middle School Jazz Academy, and this is Improvisation. Improvisation is one of the defining features of jazz, from the collective improvisation of early jazz, to the solo improvisation of Louis Armstrong and Mary Lou Williams, to the free jazz of Albert Eiler, Ornette Coleman, and John Coltrane. Improvisation has always been central to this music, and some of the guiding principles of improvisation include making up music with whatever resources are available, playing around with the rhythm, embellishing the melody of a piece, and infusing what you play with your feeling and unique personality. Improvisation builds relationships among the members of the band, helping them to talk to one another and express their personalities in real time and in community with the audience. One technique commonly used in improvisation is called embellishment. Take a common melody like uh, Back Home in Indiana. Now what happens when she plays around with the melody a little bit? Changes the rhythm. Comes a lot more fun, a lot more personal. Now when you add the band, additional things happen. The band interacts with the melody and with the soloists, and they provide a rhythmic and harmonic foundation. In fact, if we do our jobs well, she's going to feel free as a bird to make this music her own. Let's do it. So that's kind of our, our short um, introduction to jazz improvisation. And one of the, you know, as the techniques we talked about, uh, 
is embellishment. So I believe Florence was saying, taking an original piece of music and kind of making your own. Um, and yeah, so that's like one of the techniques that jazz improvisers use um, in performing standards, like they were just performing one um, called Back Home in Indiana. So um, there's also uh, bits of improvisation or like different, um, sorry, like improvisational techniques like call and response. So, uh, you know, you making type of some type of musical gesture or sound and then, you know, the audience or your colleagues in the band that you're playing with or just the musicians in the ensemble um, that you're writing for respond to that melody that you write um, and vice versa. So, um, yeah, did anybody learn anything about jazz improvisation in that video that they didn't know before? Daisy, tell me something that you learned from that video that you didn't know before. Oh, I'm still thinking of something. Uh oh. Are you talking? Yeah. Okay. Still thinking of something. You're still thinking? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about Vidant? Do you want to share something that you maybe learned or didn't know about before about jazz improvisation from the video? No? Okay, y'all. Nobody wants to talk to me today. It's fine. Um, we'll just move along then. So, oh, is there something in the chat? Oh, okay. No worries. If you want to type in the chat too, that's totally fine. I just would prefer not to be talking to myself. So, um, okay. So like we said, improvisation exists in more than one genre of music and it actually exists probably in most genres of music, but it's not the most defining character characteristic of a, a style of music. So um, most of us here come from some type of classical background. And if you don't, that's also okay. Um, but I thought that this, this video in particular was super unique and I wanted to share it with you all uh, because in the classical canons and in the classical idiom, you know, the people who are the most important in practice and in performance are the composers. Um, and a composer's individual voice or style uh, really is, um, well, I mean, that's, that's how you know you're listening to a particular composer based on their, uh, the style in which they compose in or the certain things that they utilize. Um, so I wanted to, to uh, share this, this video of this pianist um, kind of improvising in some of the, the styles of, of some prominent classical composers. So let's listen.
Okay. Sir, as you can see, like we probably heard something like 15 to 20 different composer and composer inspired inspired goodness gracious improvisational styles and throughout the entire video she's just playing uh you know as her source material or as her uh you know the original piece of music is just mary had a little lamb and we just heard so many different iterations and variations of what that can sound like in a different style but also um you know adding a lot of kind of like improvised things based on the individual composer um so I, I think for me, the reason why I really wanted to, to share this with you all, well, to share, to share both of those things with you, those, those two videos, um, is to give you a visual representation and a visual connection to performers um, and improvisation and how it comes from the individual. And it, it's, improvisation can be a collective effort, um, but it is very much so about the individual voice and the individual stamp. On, on what it is that you're including in the conversation. So um, I, I don't think we will watch this. Well, maybe we'll watch a little bit. We won't watch the whole thing um, because I want to, I can't really see what time it is. Now we have time. Yeah, I wanna have a bit of a discussion about this. Uh, but let's, let's, let's see what they have to say. I haven't watched this in a minute. When you think of musical improvisation, the first thing that comes to mind might be jazz or the blues. But the practice of improvisation is actually a part of many musical traditions all across the globe. As a classically trained musician, I've personally been working on developing my improvisational skills over the past few years, as you can see from these charts that detail how I spend my practice hours. Today, classical musicians are known for playing music as written in a score, note for note. But this wasn't always the case. This may surprise you, but from the Middle Ages to about the late 1800s or so, improvisation was actually a big part of music performance and training. So why have classical musicians stopped learning how to improvise? In classical music, improvisation dates back to the Middle Ages. Soloists would add spontaneous embellishments over familiar melodies, and the score provided served as a skeleton of the melody over which musicians would add their own variations. An example of melodic variation today might be found at a sporting event with the national anthem. Singers would typically add in variations and fills while keeping the melody and lyrics still recognizable. Going overboard with embellishments, however, is never ideal because it can easily lead to a distasteful interpretation. <laughs> Classical musicians also improvise accompaniments to melodies. In fact, the first record of improvisation in Western music comes from 9th century writings that detail how to add counter melodies to Gregorian chants. Later, during the Baroque era, this type of improvised accompaniment became what is called basso continuo. They used a kind of music notation called figured bass, which provides a bass line along with symbols that indicate what intervals to use, chord suggestions, and types of voicings. So a musician, say a keyboardist, would take this information and would improvise with and over the bass line. Probably the most widely known example of improvisation in classical music is the cadenza. If you're playing a Mozart concerto back in the day, towards the end, there's always a, a point where the, the harmony reaches a peak and then um, everyone stops, the pianist or whatever instrument ins instrumentalist will do a solo basically on the themes from the main parts and traditionally that was all improvised. That was good. <laughs> Yeah. If that was your theme, maybe you would, um, uh, so we're in G major. That's the orchestra, the conductor goes, okay.
Okay, question. Is this impro improvised right here? Yeah, yeah, you just okay. do the, Right? And then you go, <laughs> maybe you'll try to make it more That's fancy. super well improvised. I don't know. Maybe you do. All right, every time you play something really cool, you just be like, I don't know. No. Uh, it'd be killing. <laughs> no. Okay, so this minute, this video is, is very long. And we're not gonna watch the whole thing, but it's, I don't know, is, is anybody getting like, uh, like, are you learning anything that you didn't know? Like, I, I really would like to hear from you all, even in the chat. Um, because watching this video and watching them interact as a classically trained musician in this basically like this jazz drummer, um, you know, both of them are kind of informing each other about how improvisation works in both styles. So even in the performance aspect of them playing together and he was verbally communicating with her saying like, you know, there was a point in time when they were playing like that rhythm, uh, 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 like all together. And he wanted her to play it again. Like, so they were working together to compose together in time and improvise that kind kind of rhythm again. And so he verbally communicated to that, that to her while they were performing. But and even her individual example of like how improvisation exists in like a concerto. And he's like, oh, is that improvised? I have no idea. Like, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot more that jazz improvisers and classical improvisers have in common than we realize. And it roots, and it dates back a lot further than we realize. So I say all of this like, to, you know, it's like really important to know like the history of like music period and to know, um, you know, where stuff comes from, because it's not like, we didn't just all of a sudden, you know, in the 1900s when jazz musicians started, you know, making music together, they didn't create improvisation. Like we said, this dates back forever and, and this across many different cultures. It's just, we all communicated in different ways. And there's not really a calm, like a super common universal language outside of like notated music in which we can talk about these different things and how they overlap. And it's really just like a lot of, I find myself doing like a lot of translating across genres. Like they call it this, but it's like the same practice just in a different form and a different style of music. Um, so when you think of musical- Now that we've talked a lot, a lot, a lot about improvisation, um, as a, as a now trained, um, oh, improv is basically a universal language. Absolutely. I love that. And that's a, that's a really great, um, insight. Um, so yeah, now that we've kind of talked about what it is and, and how it's practiced or how it's utilized, um, you know, I've created this list for like different ways that you as individuals can practice improvising. Um, but my from my personal experience coming from like learning how to compose and write music first well i guess i played an instrument but i wasn't like i didn't take private lessons or anything until much later in my life um and my practice as an improviser and in performance has really helped strengthen my individual voice as a composer so the practice of improv and, and also like when i'm writing most of my compositions, they, they start as improvisations because you know, you're composing in real time. And that's why it's like great that we have so much technology like voice recorders and having a DAW. So you can just type all that in and then walk, like you can record it in real time and then come back to it and edit it the way that you want to. So you're like most of, most of my pieces start off as improvisations and they're not necessarily always uh, like a clear cut idea in my head or maybe they are like that starts kind of like the source of the improvisation, but then, you know, fleshing it out over time. So here are some different uh, you know, methods or different techniques you can use to kind of develop those practices on your own. Uh, the biggest one, and I know that folks are gonna be like, oh, I'm not a musician, I'm not a singer, da, 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 da. It does not matter. Uh, you are a musician and you are a singer. Um, your voice is meant to be used in the context of music and it will inform your musicality and it will inform the ways in which you write. I want to encourage you all to practice singing however good or bad you feel like it is. Um, it's for you, it's not for anybody else. And how you can do that is by singing along to recorded music. Um, that could be your favorite piece of music, a piece of music you want to learn, a piece of music you think is really hard, whatever. But use your voice to, to sing along with it and to mimic the different parts of the music that you're hearing 
uh, because, you know, as they become a part of you, like I think I said this in the in the last session, you know, if you can sing, you can play it, which means you can also write it. So once it becomes a part of you, it becomes a part of your music. And singing is a great way to internalize new aspects of music. Um, and so, you know, also playing along with a piece of music. So if you decide, actually, I want to strengthen, you know, my oral skills in relation to hearing something and then being able to play it back on my instrument. Also a really great practice uh, for learning how to improvise. Um, to get creative with the melody. So we saw that in all of the videos that we watched taking Mary Had a Little Lamb and the jazz standard and really adding all these different embellishments um, and your own kind of like personal touch and even changing uh, the rhythm, which we saw also across the board from all of the different composers. Um, I think this is probably the most important one is embracing you know, musical accident. Uh, a lot of times, especially as a performer, um, I personally get really scared uh, about like playing something wrong. And that's just kind of like something that academia and music education kind of ingrains in us. Um, but really sometimes the best musical moments come from the things that you didn't mean to do. And uh, you know, it's okay to, to be singing along to something or to be playing something and you mess up because that, that mess up, that, that, op that moment is an opportunity for you to change it into some type of moment in your piece. Um, so a lot of the times, like for example, in, in real time, like when I'm improvising, uh, you know, if we're playing a tune and I play a note that is not in the scale uh, and maybe I don't mean to, but if you play it, a couple of more times or you add a different rhythm to it or you add a slide to it, then it becomes a part of the moment. And even though it was a mistake initially, like you still recovered from it and were able to communicate something through it. So just don't be afraid to, to make a mistake in your composing or in your performance or in your practice at all. Like mistakes are good and sometimes they lead you to where you're actually trying to get. Um, Cause we can, a lot of the times be super perfectionist and, and get in our head about the sounds that we're trying to create and the stories we're trying to tell. Um, and finally, one of the one of the practices that I really enjoy is recording yourself and listening back. So whether that's you recording yourself, practicing singing or practicing playing along with a song um, or, you know, even just practice, uh, sorry, recording yourself improvising like you're working on a piece like you sit like let's say after this, you decide I want to start working on a piano sketch for my piece, throw on the voice recorder, sit down at the piano and play. And then when you're ready to, you know, get into shaping your narrative and shaping your ideas and putting it into the notation software, or putting it into your DAW, you have a piece of source material to edit and, and break apart and morph into the piece that you want to create. So are we out of time? Do I have five minutes left? What time is it 40 minutes? I can't remember. Is it 45? Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So I think we have like five, 10 minutes left. Okay. So now what I would like to do is we're going to fill in you know, we're going to create a list of what you all think are some ways that you could practice, um, you know, composition through improvisation or improvisation through composition. Um, so really, this is kind of just like you can answer the question directly or just even share like an insight, um, something that you learned about composition and improvisation through this session. So Everybody is going to share something. There are eight of us, seven of us. Okay. So I'm just gonna go down this list. Uh, Zani? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Nice to meet you, Zani. Um, so what do, you, what do you think is a way to practice composition through improvisation? Um, some stuff that I do sometimes is I'll just try to find, well, I'll start with just like around the piano, getting just one chord change that sounds interesting where I can just do two chords that where it's like a unique sound. Mm -hmm. um, and then just play notes in those chords in random order. And then it's just improv kind of like spacey until I get like a combination that sounds nice. And then I can stop and then start writing that down. 
Beautiful. So I will uh, succinctly put that as looping. Great. Uh, Vidant, do you want to type something into the chat uh, on how you think we can practice composition through improvisation? Okay. You said, when improvising, you should capture a musical idea in your head before you play it. Um, it's, it is an option. You, it's not, I don't want to say that it's a definite thing like you should. Sometimes I have no idea what I'm about to play before it comes out. And sometimes those are the better ideas. So you don't necessarily always have to have an idea in your mind. Sometimes, you know, the, the spontaneity of the moment and of your body and of what, you know, whatever sound comes out is equally a part of, of improvising um, than coming up with something in your head and then playing it. Both, both parts are part of the, the, uh, the process, but that's, that's a really great point. Uh, so yeah, think about, and if it sounds good, embellish on it and turn it into a full thing. Beautiful. So uh, uh, create or come up with musical idea in your head and embellish. Awesome. Thank you, Vidan. Uh, Tim. Um, through improvisation. What? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, you sometimes I like to impose restrictions on myself. Like I have to do certain things when I improvise, um, and so I can sort of see the things that I come up with when I'm sort of under pressure, like in the moment. Yeah. So you create like a uh, create a set of creative restrictions or parameters. Thank you, Tim. Sam, how you doing, Sam? It's good to see you. Okay. Okay, beautiful. So like, uh, like, uh, uh, pick a specific musical vocabulary so point, again, kind of like the parameters, but I like the vocabulary. That's really a very specific thing. Uh, Florence, you can also type in the chat uh, or share on the mic with us what you think a how we can practice composition through improvisation. Florence, are you typing? Are you still here with us? All right, we'll come back to Florence. Eric. Yeah. How can we practice composition through improvisation? Yeah. You uh, practice oops. practice spell practice on practice. Thank you. That is not or primary instruments. Daisy, 
how can we practice composition through improvisation? Um, I guess back to oh, um, I guess going with like the whole new like instrument like I can't hear you. I'm gonna okay. come back there. Okay. <laughs> um, no, like I don't know, like everyday objects or everyday like like things that you do during the day. There's always like music around, so getting inspired by the outside world too. Yeah, I like that. So like uh, music, yeah, music around the sound, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a musical instrument. It's beautiful. Uh, so using uh uh using how do i say this something using unconventional objects uh All right, and Florence, our last little piece. Are you able to type if your Zoom is still freezing, Florence? I think she might just be having some tech issues. Okay. Well, this is a pretty good list. Florence, if you decide uh, that if your Zoom starts working again and you type it in the chat before we leave here, I'll make sure to add it to the document. And um, I'll also give you all access to this presentation if you wanna go back and watch those videos um, or use this as a starting place for you to go down a YouTube composition uh, wormhole, those are always fun. Um, and that's how you learn a lot sometimes, but it's also how you procrastinate a lot sometimes. So at your own discretion, you know, utilize those tools and just, you know, try doing a little bit every day. I think uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself is like be consistent in some of these practices. So I'm not saying that you need to go to college and become a, a grand master improviser today. Uh, but what I am saying is that you should spend 10 minutes a day getting to know yourself as an improviser um, and getting to know some of the sounds that you like to make and some of the sounds that you like as an improviser because those sounds will then start to show up in your compositions. Um, I know that personally, I'm a very physical composer. I'm a bass player, so I literally have to use my whole body to play my instrument. So for me, if I'm not moving or if I'm not dancing and I don't feel it in a lot of different parts of my body, I don't necessarily trust the music that I'm writing. Um, but you know, that's what I've learned as an improviser and through my creative practice. And I just want to encourage you all to continue exploring and thinking about the different ways that you can be composing and that it doesn't necessarily have to be, I have to be Mozart and the idea has to be in my head immediately and I need to be able to notate it and da 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 da. Like it can be so many different things and there's a lot of different ways to reach the end of a like at the end of a completed composed piece through the practice of improvisation. That's how you get started a lot of the times. So does anybody have any questions? No questions? Yes, Sam. <laughs> how my process has changed over time. It's gotten more efficient um, because I practice it a little bit every single day. Um, you know, I think before, like one of the first ways that I started, like I said, was like the voice recorder on my phone, sitting down at the piano and uh, listening back to a lot of those different recordings. And then I kind of like moved into, instead of having to, uh, you know, then transcribe all of those notes myself, just playing it into a DAW so that the MIDI information is all there and then I can just pick and choose from the things without having to transcribe. So that made it more efficient for me to continue practicing it that way. Um, and also I would say the thing that has, has absolutely helped me the most is, is using my voice and, and singing um, and 
singing the melodies to songs that I like and singing pieces of music that I'm trying to learn. Um, especially when I get stuck like writing a melody, it's good to like physically embody a melody that already exists. So um, yeah, what definitely like what has, what has helped is like doing it a little bit every day because it can also just be really overwhelming a lot of the times to figure out like how to capture this idea that you have in your head that has no like actual way for you to explain it um, aside from sound. So any other questions? I think we're at time, so I don't wanna take up too much more of Eric's time. But if y'all have questions at any point, you know, I'm here all week. So thanks for coming. We'll see you later.